Hi, my name is Jaron Jacobo, and welcome back to the Turo County Public Library reading series. Today we will be doing something a little bit different, and, we'll, and it's part of a new segment called Voices of the Community. We are joined by a member of the Turo County Commissioner's Office to read a very special story for the younger patrons of our library. Well, hello there. I hope everybody's doing great today. My name is David Clay and I'm the county manager and the county attorney of Tyrrell County. But a lot of you people who are in elementary school at Tyrrell Elementary know me as the guy in the bow tie who comes to read every once in a while. Because I love to read and I love the stories that we get to share. And the last story we shared was about who? It was about the Gruffalo, what? And that was a great story. We read two stories. We read about the Gruffalo, and we also read about the Gruffalo's child. And we learned about being brave and about being smart and about making sure that we're safe all the time. And those were great things to learn. But today we're going to read a different kind of story. We're going to read an older story, one that was written in about 1903 by a lady named Beatrix Potter, who also wrote the Peter Rabbit book. And this book is the tale of Benjamin Bunny, who is a relative of Peter Rabbit. So you're going to get to see the same uh, illustrations of the book as I read it. So let's begin the tale of Benjamin Bunny. One morning, a little rabbit sat on a bank. He pricked his ears and listened to the trick drop, trick drop of a pony. A gig or a wagon was coming along the road, and it was driven by Mr. McGregor. And beside him sat Mrs. McGregor in her best bonnet. As soon as they had passed, little Benjamin Bunny slid down into the road and set off with a hop, skip, and a jump, because he was a rabbit, to call upon his relations who lived in the wood at the back of Mrs. McGregor's garden. The wood was full of rabbit holes, and in the neatest, sandiest hole of all lived Benjamin's aunts and his cousins, Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and who? Peter. Old Mrs. Rabbit was a widow. She earned her living by knitting rabbit wool mittens and muffetines, which is a scarf. She also sold herbs and rosemary tea and rabbit tobacco, which is what we call lavender. Little Benjamin did not very much want to see his aunt. He came around the back of the fir tree and nearly tumbled upon the top of his cousin, Peter the Rabbit. Peter was sitting by himself. He looked poorly and was dressed in a red cotton pocket handkerchief. Peter, said little Benjamin in a whisper, who has got your clothes? Peter replied, the scarecrow in Mr. McGregor's garden and described how he had been chased about the garden and had dropped his shoes and coat. Little Benjamin sat down beside his cousin and assured him that Mr. McGregor had gone out on a gig and also Mrs. McGregor and certainly for the day because she was wearing her very best bonnet. Peter said he hoped it would rain. At this point, old Mrs. Rabbit's voice was heard inside the rabbit hole calling, Cottontail, Cottontail, fetch me some more chamomile. Peter said he thought he might feel better if he went for a walk. They went away hand in hand and got upon the flat top of the wall at the bottom of the wood. From here, they looked down into Mr. McGregor's garden. Peter's coat 
and shoes were plainly to be seen upon the scarecrow, topped with an old tam shadow which is a hat, of Mr. McGregor's. Little Benjamin said, It spoils people's clothes to squeeze under the gate. The proper way to get in is to climb down a pear tree. Peter fell down head first, but it was no consequence as the bed was newly raked and quite soft. It had been sewn with lettuces. They left a great many odd little footmarks all over the bed, especially little Benjamin, who was wearing clogs, which is a kind of shoe. Little Benjamin said the first thing to be done was to get back Peter's clothes in order that they might be able to use the pocket handkerchief. They took them off the scarecrow. There had been a rain during the night, and there was water in the shoes, and the coat was somewhat shrank. Benjamin tried on the tam shanter but it was too big for him. Then he suggested that they should fill the pocket handkerchief with onions, as a little present for his aunt. Peter did not seem to be enjoying himself. He kept hearing noises. Benjamin, on the contrary, was perfectly at home and ate a lettuce leaf. He said that he was in the habit of coming into the garden with his father to get lettuces for their Sunday dinner. The name of Benjamin's papa was old Mr. Benjamin Bunny. The lettuces were certainly fine. Peter did not eat anything. He said he should like to go home. Presently, he dropped half of the onions he had collected. Little Benjamin said that it was not possible to get back up the pear tree with a load of vegetables. He led the way boldly towards the other end of the garden. They went along a little walk on planks under a sunny red brick wall. The mice sat on their doorsteps cracking cherry stones. They winked at Peter Rabbit and little Benjamin Bunny. Presently, Peter let the pocket handkerchief go again. They got amongst flower pots and frames and tubs. Peter heard noises worse than ever. His eyes were big as lollipops. He was a step or two in front of his cousin when suddenly he stopped. This is what those little rabbits saw round that corner. Little Benjamin took one look and then in half a minute or less than no time, he hid himself and Peter, and the onions, underneath a large basket. The cat got up, stretched herself, and came and sniffed at the basket. Perhaps she liked the smell of onions. Anyway, she sat down upon the top of the basket. She sat there for five hours. I cannot draw you a picture of Peter and Benjamin underneath the basket because it was quite dark and because the smell of onions was fearful. It made Peter Rabbit and little Benjamin cry. The sun got round behind the wood and it was quite late in the afternoon, but still the cat sat upon the basket. At length, there was a pitter-patter, pitter-patter, and some bits of mortar fell from the wall above. The cat looked up and saw old Mr. Benjamin Bunny prancing along the wall, along the top of the wall, of the upper terrace. He was smoking a pipe of rabbit tobacco and had a little switch in his hand. He was looking for his son. Old Mr. Bunny had no opinion whatever of cats. He took a tremendous jump off the top of the wall, onto the top of the cat, and cuffed it off the basket, and kicked it into the greenhouse, scratching off a handful of fur. The cat was much too surprised. 
to scratch back. When old Mr. Bunny had driven the cat into the greenhouse, he locked the door. Then he came back to the basket and took out his son Benjamin by the ears and whipped him with the little switch. Then he took out his nephew Peter. He took out the handkerchief of onions and marched out of the garden. When Mr. McGregor returned about half an hour later, he observed several things which perplexed him. It looked as though some person had been walking all over the garden in a pair of clogs. Only the footprints were too ridiculously little. Also, he could not understand how the cat could have managed to shut herself up inside the greenhouse, locking the door upon the outside. When Peter got home, his mother forgave him because she was so glad to see that he had found his shoes and coat. Cottontail and Peter folded up the pocket handkerchief, and old Mrs. Rabbit strung up the onions and hung them from the kitchen ceiling with the bunches of herbs and rabbit tobacco. The end. All was well with Benjamin Bunny. Well, wasn't that a wonderful story? It was a wonderful story because it told us about Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail, and Peter, and Benjamin, and Benjamin's dad, and his mom, and all the bunnies who lived and how they outsmarted the cat, got the clothes back, and also were able to give their mom something to prepare for them for, for Sunday dinner. That's a great story. Thank you for being with me. Thank you for, for listening and, and caring about the tales of Peter Rabbits. And hopefully soon we can do it again. And if you've got any ideas of a book you would like for me to read or one that we really need to look at to see if we, we want to share it, um, give me a call. Send me an email at dclegg, C-L-E-G-G, at tyrrellcounty.net, and we'll see what we can do. Thank you. Bye-bye.